previously on Mike Checks It Out. I don't know what went on prior to me getting here, but for some reason I feel the need to apologize. We're gonna explore Oculus Link once again with a USB 2.0 cable. This is a way better experience than I honestly expected. So let's hop into a faster game, and I'm talking about Space Pirate Trainer, where speed definitely matters, especially when you get into the later levels. To give you an idea of what the latency was looking like, from my perspective, it was actually, I really didn't notice the latency. Right. So there's one more thing that we have to try, which is a non-Oculus right. title to see how well right. does this work on Steam VR. It's already a little bit more noticeable as far as the latency, whereas I definitely didn't feel this before playing it over Oculus Link. With the official Oculus Link cable, this is a loading screen, so we'll have to wait until we get into the game to judge. Oh no. Nope. Secret Gaming Man was gone. There was something more going on here than just a speed difference in cables that caused this travesty. There's no way I can figure it out because I can't play games. So I looked and I checked every avenue that I could think of until I realized exactly what I needed. When you have something that you love, that you do every day, and you do it so well that you become a secret operative. Sometimes, what seems like a simple task can spell the end of your life. And that's what happened a couple weeks ago for Secret Gaming Man, as he fell ill doing what he thought was a routine video on testing Oculus Link on USB 2.0. Now originally, it was theorized that this sickness was caused by the transfer speeds but as a commenter pointed out in that video, Virtual Reality Oasis also made a video and they pointed out that the transfer speeds of Oculus Link is only 150 megabits, which is well under the 480 that USB 2.0 provides. And also in the Virtual Reality Oasis video, they didn't have any issues with Half-Life Alex. So if that's the case, then why did Secret Game Man perish when testing out Half-Life Alex over USB 2.0? Well, that's why Mike called in a detective. And that's me, Detective Miguel. And of course, as any great detective would do, I start off at the scene of the crime, the scene where Secret Gaming Man perished from playing Half-Life Alex. There were very few leads here. The first thing that stood out is while playing these games, OBS was being used to record the video, and also GeForce Experience was on, which is not recommended to use with Oculus Link because it can impact performance. However, Secret Gaming Man always uses GeForce Experience with Oculus Link. So if that's the case, could the culprit possibly be the USB 2.0 port? So the first thing I did was I took that same USB 3 cable that was being used in that video and I hooked it back up to the USB 2 port in the front of the computer the way it was configured in the video, and I did a speed test and they came back with around 350 megabits, which tells me the speed of that port should be more than enough, but I wanted to make sure. So I took an active USB 2.0 adapter, the monoprice one specifically, attached it to this USB 3 cable and plugged it into a USB 3 port to see if maybe that would give me a higher overhead as far as speed, but that result came out exactly the same. And then I took the same cable and just tested it directly with USB 3. And that came back with 1.8 gigabits and then I also tested the official Oculus Link cable and that came back with the same speed rating as the USB 3 cable. So that tells me, regardless of which port it was connected to, we would have run into the same issue. So that still doesn't explain why we ran into this issue if this test is showing us that we can get 350 megabits over USB 2.0, but the headset is only sending and receiving at 150 megabits. So it was very perplexing. So since none of this was making sense, there was no choice but for me to get hands on. So the first thing I did was I took the same cable using the incident a few weeks ago and I connected it to a USB 3 port. Since it is a USB 3.0 cable, it was just plugged into a USB 2.0 for the purposes of that last video. And I went ahead and I turned OBS on and made sure GeForce Experience was enabled. 
And so that way it would also give us the frame rate in the corner and that annoying green text. So upon testing it over USB 3.0, there was no issues. There was, it was smooth sailing ahead, except one thing that I never thought about before, the game does occasionally stutter. Even over USB 3.0, even with the official Oculus Link cable, it does have us occasional stutters, but it's not a big deal. It's just for a second or so, it might just stutter a little bit. So the next thing I did was take the same cable, plugged it back into the USB 2.0 port, and I ran into the same experience that Secret Gaming Man ran into, where I began to feel nauseous and unpleasant. And I had the settings for this game on high fidelity, which is a second from the highest. So I lowered it down to medium fidelity. While it was a little bit better, the turning still made me a little bit nauseous. There was still some artifacting when I walked into the dark area. I made sure to stay in the same area for this whole video. Then, finally, I tried low fidelity, which was a lot more playable. There was less artifacting, and the turning was still a little bit bad, but it was a playable experience. But, of course, this was at the lowest graphic settings. But, again, this still didn't make any sense. If both of these cables are capable of transferring the same speed, then why am I able to play with the USB 3 cable on high fidelity, but I have to drop this cable to low to even get an experience that doesn't kill me. Oh, and I also put it on ultra fidelity, which was, uh, yeah, don't do that. Ever. Ever. So this mystery had me very confused. Had me questioning life. Had me question the end of Secret Gaming Man's life and wondering what could have been done to prevent this? And that's when it hit me. Speed is only one piece of the puzzle. Yes, USB 2.0 is capable of carrying enough speed to run an Oculus Link, but USB 2.0 is also half duplex, which means it can't send and receive data at the same time like a USB 3.0 cable can. Why is this important, and why would it matter more on Half-Life Alex than Super Hot or Space Pirate Trainer? Well, here's the thing. Even though for the most part the RTX 2070 runs the game fine on high fidelity, it does experience frame drops, which is why over USB 3.0 I would get the occasional stutter. But what can make an occasional stutter even worse? Well, over USB 3.0, I'm constantly receiving images. So if there's a, a split second where I don't receive an image, it's not gonna be that bad. You know, it, it's, it's a frame drop. So if it drops a frame, it's not gonna be that bad because I'm constantly receiving images. Over USB 2.0, where it's sending data from the headset and then waiting to receive the data back, if the graphics card is dropping frames, like on this part where it dropped down to 66 frames per second and the Oculus runs at 72, I might have noticed some stuttering on USB 3, but on USB 2, this was absolutely like unplayable, borderline nauseating. Since there's already a delay in getting the frame in the first place, since USB 2 can't send and receive data at the same time, it started to make a lot more sense. So the frame drops that I experienced, where it felt like a split second, USB 3.0, it just felt like an eternity because there's already an additional layer of latency on top of that. In a normal gaming scenario, wouldn't make that much difference, but in VR, where you're immersed and it's kind of tricking your mind and thinking that you're in the space, and you have something that just breaks immersion like that, and especially if you're moving around, it can make you very sick. The reason that Super Hot and Space Pirate Trainer work just fine over USB 2.0 is because they're not taxing the GPU. There's always gonna be frames there for the USB 2.0 connection to retrieve, but a game that's gonna tax your GPU, you might start noticing issues, unless theoretically you have like a super powerful GPU, which in that case, theoretically, you'd probably have a USB 3.0 cable as well. So what can I say about this as a detective? After revisiting USB 2.0 with Oculus Link, I guess I'd come to the same conclusion as Secret Gaming Man came to before he perished last week, and that is, USB 2.0 is great if you want to test a few games and kind of get an idea of what PC VR gaming can be like. But if you want the best experience, even a $20 Ocker cable is going to be a way better experience, and you're going to be prone to running into less issues. Even though USB 3.0 is a lot faster, it's not the point. It's just a newer standard, and the way that it handles data is different from USB 2.0. So, 
I, like Secret Gaming Man, recommend if you're serious about playing some games on PC VR with the Oculus Quest to get a USB 3.0 cable. But in the meantime, if you don't have the money to, USB 2.0 will work just fine. You might just have to lower some settings if it's a more graphically intensive game in order to have an okay experience. Well, I'm gonna call this one a case closed. But if you enjoyed this video, well, you can make sure to tell a friend, tell a coworker, like, share, and subscribe, and always do at least two things at the same time. Out.